Welcome back, everybody. This is Dusty Circuit here. And, of course, I'm back with the history of all my builds on Artcraft series. And if you've been following along, you, have, you would have seen the following builds uh, featured. My very first base. My my first auto sorting slash crazy redstone base, my first community oriented farms, my first guardian farm, my very the first base I built with Kyla, or the or other, in other words the uh, the base and the ocean next to her island. The 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 the, the four corners, or in other words the Amplified Jungle Base with Ninjago. A sort of second redstone base that turned out to be the laggiest base on the server. And my, well, uh, my, well, the, my, my, the, and, and uh, the Enderman Farm, the, the one I had with Mod for that first was me and Mod Killers, and then Jago kind of joined into it. And today I'm going is going to be about more farms that I built. And before I kind of get into it, I want to kind of this is just some things I left out of the other video because that video was. Or, uh, these are things I wanted to include in the laggiest space on Artcraft video, but I kind of did. I, I either forgot to include this, or I decided not to put it in because the video was long enough as it was. And this was, and this is that at around the time of my life that I have. Uh, done the that base and these farms I would have actually graduated from high school I would have like I was I think it was I started the the, the the fifth base when I was like in 12th grade and I might have graduated during that that base and well, what kind of happened was I didn't actually find of course, I didn't. I, of course, I, I, at first I kind of just just had a break from a lot of things. I didn't. I just thought, well, I wasn't really going to start college or any of that, like like immediately. And I was probably just going to have like a year or two break. And to this day, I kind of don't have much really going on. I'm still technically in that break, but. But what kind of what, what, but what this meant for my projects on Artcraft is that I did that that I that I had a, that I all of a sudden got a lot more. Well, this this meant that I all of a sudden got lots of time, like lots of free time, to do uh, really ambitious projects and. This, uh, which kind of, which act, which actually led to the scale of some of my farms going way, way up, and like even to levels where staff would be concerned of lag on the server, and some of these projects would have been successful, and some of these would have actually caused lag on the server and may have even got me into some trouble, but uh, the good thing is that I did learn my lesson and uh, a lot of my and, and a lot of the then I went on to build farms on ACO that actually ended ended up benefiting the community. And, uh, yeah, 
I don't really have much else to say, so let's go ahead and uh, go on to this uh, particular farm that I'm going to talk about in this video. This was a a melon and pump pumpkin farm that I had built, and I would have started this project roughly when I think I was still in the fifth base, and my thought was at the time that uh, well, I had I already had a uh, like, like I already had built a melon and pumpkin farm at that base that was uh, already pretty big, or well, I guess big compared to most other builds on the server. But uh, I don't, uh, kind of later on during that base, I have transitioned uh, almost entirely to getting my re resources from the ch shops at the fourth spawn. And I didn't actually show, I haven't actually gotten to show in this yet. Um, I, I said, I may have said in a few of my older videos that I was going to show the, how the shops are, but I'm, um, I didn't end up doing that, so that's what we're going to do now. So, so at ar around this point in Autcraft's history that I, that I had the fifth base, uh, Autcraft's shop system and, and with it essentially its entire economy basically changed to... Uh, kind of become like a like an emerald dependent economy and like villager dependent. And the economy of Autcraft before this change, especially back when I did uh my first few bases, like like back in the 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 earlier on part of the series, I would have uh Oh, okay, so the, the, the economy back then, how it worked was you would, you course, of course, they still had the jobs that you would do to earn in-game money. But uh, there was also the mob arena that also gives you lots of money if you, if you win the, like, for each round you would win, you'd probably get, like, like a few thousand points or so. And and I think it was I don't remember if it was at Spawn or like the, the like the shopping districts back then, but Autcraft had a bank where you would buy and sell uh, the iron, gold, diamonds, and emeralds, and each of those would be worth successfully more points. And At around the point in, in time that I had been, had started the fifth base, Autism Father decided that uh, that that shop system was uh, just too o overpowered, and kind of in his attempt to make the shops less overpowered and also to give us the players freedom to even create our own shops uh, he had introduced a plugin that lets you create your own shop which is basically spawns in a villager that you could trade with that but but it has custom trades that 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 you can configure to be whatever you want it would also be it would also link to a chest so that any any items the the player buys, they would they would they would, they would the, the emeralds would go into that chest, and also items you're selling would be taken from that chest as well. And 
kind of as part of that whole change, he also added all these shops that are, as you can see, that are at the spawn. That basically I could just buy any of the stuff I want. And, and of course there's no like trade limit. This is basically infinite. And basically as long as I have emeralds, I could just get any of those items that I want. And in fact, this is not actually, this kind of an economy system is not unique to Autcraft. Like there are, there are plenty of also Skywalk servers that have this kind of economy and I bet other servers, other survival servers have it as well. And so my, uh, thought process for this farm was that I was going to just just have a farm that I'll, that will produce an I items that I can trade with villagers in this case melons and pumpkins and and then I can I actually had a farmer villager that I got from my trading hall that had the best trades you can have for Melons and pumpkins, which I believe are like seven pumpkins for an emerald and eight melons for an emerald. And 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 mind you, this is the uh, villager. This is before 1.14. So this, uh, of course, this would this would have been using the old villager mechanics. And. When I first started this project, uh, it would originally, it would not have been this quite this big. I think the farm went up to about this height, and I think this was the top. But uh, over several, probably a, probably a couple of months or so, I think I actually built this up, and, and then... Eventually, I built this up from up, up, up all the way to sky limit. Like, this farm goes all the way up to the build limit. And as you can see, this, this is right here. This is build limit. And in fact, uh, these kind of mega farms also are, are popular on Skyblock servers with the with that kind of an economy system in place, kind of like Autcrafts. And kind of my my thought process at the time was that I was just going to build the biggest farm that I could, and of course, uh, Autcraft has the AF AFK kick, and it's against the rules to purposely bypass the AFK kick. So, I kind of, basically, I took the approach that I'm just going to build the biggest farm I can so that I can... Just, just, just to actually reduce the amount of time spent AFK, and I originally had plans to build two of these towers, but uh, like, like of course, one of these being for melons and the other being for pumpkins. But that, 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 that actually never ended up happening. And what ended up happening is I split this tower between melons on one side and pumpkins on another side. And I would have used this farm quite a lot 
and uh, of course down here I would have had uh, like on this side would be a storage system for the pumpkins and on this side I would have had a system where the melons would go into a storage unit and but at the bottom of all those chests I had dispensers that were or droppers that would basically I would flick on a lever and that would shoot out all the melons and then those would go in a water stream and then eventually I would and then I'd be able to auto craft them and then put them in, in, in a chest and then basically kind of make blocks of melons kind of like this because that's the only form that the villagers would trade them in of course a farm this size was actually pretty laggy for me. I think I remember like my my FPS like I'd be getting around a hundred or so or two hundred FPS like with, with when this wasn't when the when this was off but of course when I whenever this would harvest my FPS would, would probably drop in, into like the forties and thirties. But this was still when I was on my old computer. I also kind of want to think this might have also even affected TPS, but I always, like, whenever I was using this farm, I was, like, watching TPS, and it didn't, it, like, it did not, it never, like, like it never even registered as dropping when, when this farm, when this farm was running, and... I also learned another kind of tactic to kind of indirectly monitor TPS, which is using a beacon. And basically, like say if I were to watch all these effects here, it, it would count down to a certain number, then it would always refresh. But of course, that's actually since that's tied to the TPS of the server, if, if the TPS server were to drop below 20, then those numbers would take longer to refresh. And based on the amount of time they would take to refresh, I, 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 I would be able to estimate what the TPS would be based on that. And, uh, I have been using this farm for quite, quite a while to actually get for, for, as my main source of, of, uh, basically, basically as my main source of money on this, on the server. And it's like at AFK here long enough for the... I would dump the melon storage to fill up and then I would AFK while the, the, the dispenser clock would be running so that I could a, that I could essentially auto craft the melons. And then I would fill shulkers up with the melons and pumpkins and then bring and then bring those over to where I had my villager trading at and then I would, I would just trade uh, to get emeralds and and even then it wasn't a hundred percent efficient of a process because sometimes I would have to spend emeralds re 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 refreshing the trades so we'd, be, we'd probably be looking at it mo at best probably probably 85 percent efficiency or probably even as worse as 60% if I have to restock trades a lot or, or refresh trades.
and at the time I'm thinking what would have actually happened on the server whenever I'd be running this farm was that it's like whenever the whenever the farm would harvest that might drop TPS probably probably to seventeen or sixteen or so, but or, or, or probably most of the time it would, 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 wouldn't even drop below eighteen, but that that but that but that drop was so brief that it would not actually register on the the site. So so that it would that would stay twenty TPS because it doesn't stay below twenty TPS long enough for it to register. Or at least that's kind of a theory of mine. And I remember when I was back at my, like in my older computer, like I, if I'd be, be up at the top of the farm and I'd be looking down, I would, basically my FPS would drop to in the 30s, but I don't know if it's uh, probably a combination of the, mine, the, the Minecraft updates since when I built this and my computer upgrade that I got since then probably has definitely made this farm less laggy, at least on my end. And this is probably a bad idea, but just, just for my viewers, I am actually going to activate this farm just so you can see how much the sex you're going to produce just in one harvest. So, uh, here goes nothing. And I can tell. TPS is probably dropping already. And as you can see, I'm already in like in down in twenty FPS. So, um, yeah, like, uh, at least by the beacon effect, it looks like what would happen, of course my theory is correct, uh, TPS would drop while it's harvesting, but then it would quickly recover. And now I'm also going to show just how much this produced in that one harvest.
so there. <coughs> so yeah, so there you go. There's also this shulker. So yeah, here's uh, what one harvest of that giant farm produced. Yeah. And this would have been run off of a hopper of a hopper timer that would have been in here, but as you can see at one point I uh, started deconstructing most of what I built here, but the farm itself still stands because to be honest, I just can't really be bothered to to, to actually tear this down because it's actually going to be close, take close to the amount of time I spent building this to actually tear it down. And in fact, I actually kind of want to leave it here because, like, I don't, like, I am, I don't know what staff is gonna think, but I kind of would like to leave this farm standing because, to me, it kind of is a big part of my history and kind of. And in fact, I, I, I would have used this farm well into actually the construction of the sixth base, the uh the, the station X in the end. And it wasn't until kind of when that base was uh complete that I finally switched over to uh the uh Vindicator spawners, like what everybody else is doing, because uh of course Vind Vindicator spawners are a lot easier than uh having a giant farm like this and uh and then tr spending and uh, possibly longer than the farm takes to produce items to, uh, to actually trade them with a, a, a farmer villager i just saw this build over here i'm just curious It's not protected. Mm, yeah. I mean, uh, anyone watching my video, if uh, you can feel free to leave your suggestions as of uh, what you want to see me do to this farm, whether you think I should tear it down or if I should build something around it or to, to make it look cool or like, or even if the farm itself can no longer function for for, for server lag concerns, if it can at least be made into some kind of a monument or, or whatever. But uh, anyway, uh, over uh, in this direction, I built uh, another tree farm. This tree farm is using uh, a design by El Mango, and it was his, if I remember correctly, his universal tree farm for 1.11. And um, last I was using this, it was you know, it was a great farm when it was working, but. I ran into problems where the farm would always break, like like pistons would break or 
or just as the farm would break. And as you can see, it is broken. But, uh, like, I mean, this farm used a lot of, like, zero tick, uh, red redstone in it. Like, uh, for instance, this, these, this, this, this place where you see the gravel and the sand, that would be, think like a zero tick pulse, uh, generator. And this, this farm, uh, and, and, and of course this farm used a lot of those because it would, of course it would make the farm really fast and and I think Omango would have also designed this farm to work with a wither cage and or and or a uh, a TNT blast chamber but uh, of course since TNT just doesn't work on Artcraft I say of course I went for this setup that would make the wood into a cube and then I would collect it manually. But I ended up just, I just kind of stopped using this farm because I just was constantly having problems with it. And uh, I eventually just ended up buying wood from the, the, the spawn. And uh, anyway, and th and I also ended up kind of using this area to test out redstone. So you kind of see some other builds here. I think this this would have this build here would have been like I think I think this was a one one of, one of those machines that would con that would convert sand. I think it was think it would convert sand into red sand through 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 that 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 glitch that 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 made it work. But of course, that's since been, I think that was patched by now. And this is a kind of a variant of Ethos. Uh, I think he called it the Pixel. If you watch his Let's Play series, it's this. Basically, this automated uh, storage system using shulkers, where you would select an item from an inventory, and then, and then, and then, and then it would search through a collection of shulkers you have in storage, and then return shulkers with that containing that item. And of course, he 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 was able to make a storage system using that concept. And this is this wasn't his particular design, but it was another YouTuber that recreated it that I built it that I built here. And this is a another build of that that potion room that I showed in my my first the first episode of the series, but I rebuilt it here. And if I remember correctly, I did get it working, but I think it was I ran out of ingredients to keep it stocked, and I kind of ended up not using it anymore. And I think Nin might have used it for a few things, or uh, and I think it and it also kind of ended up getting. As you can, I don't, I don't remember if this was from Creepers or or, or what happened, but, but this uh, this this room kind of fell into disuse for a little while. But I really would like to build another potion room, and uh, and like. Nowadays, I don't really use potions that often because I just have I just have so many beacons that I get my effects from beacons instead. But of course, there's still plenty of potions that you can't get. Uh, there's still plenty of effects you, that only come from potions, and uh, of course, potions uh, have their use in wither fights still on Artcraft and. On AC, and of course on ACO they have their use in the PvP matches. 
Let's send, uh... I really want to build another potion brewing system eventually. And this is all I really have to show in this video, and uh, I have a few other farms to show in my next video, so remember, be sure to stay tuned for that. This was actually a villager breeder that I had built because I wanted to, because the thing was, uh, that villager that I got that had the perfect trades that I was using to trade the pumpkins and melons I got from that farm over there. That that villager was in the hard world and these farms were built in the peaceful world. And I had uh, I, I just wanted to actually get a farmer villager here. So I actually built this villager breeder and I actually was able to get plenty of villagers in here, but I think eventually I kind of ended up killing a lot of them because uh, I just didn't want to look like um, I just have lots of mobs, or, or, or at least that way to the staff. And uh, and eventually I, I, I actually switched over to using vin a Vindicator farm, and which I'm going to talk about in my um, possibly in my next videos in this series. And and it's just around the and it's just at this point in time in Artcraft. Uh, I I just really like. I guess a lot of us have some kind of a bad habit, like whether it be staying on, I guess staying on the computer too long, or I have that bad habit, and, or, like, not cleaning your room, or not, or not doing your homework, or, I don't really know of any other examples I could come up with, but everyone has some kind of a bad habit, I bet. But my one of my biggest bad habits, especially for Artcraft, was uh, just going really overboard and overambitious with uh, bases and farms and a lot of my projects and of course that 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 would that's very that was highly evident in the second base the uh in the fifth base and also kind of these farms this particular farm as well although this farm never actually ended up causing lag issues for the server at least not majorly and uh But a little bit later on, I w was to go on to new projects that may have gotten the staff mad at me and may have even gotten me in some trouble. And, uh, and I don't really want to spoil too much for the later part of the series, but... Some of these projects have actually gotten me in trouble, and I'm just saying that uh, I'm lucky that my, my, none of them actually ruined my life for good. And I'm just happy to say that, well, a lot, of, a lot of my past farms have caused me to get in trouble with staff. I'm happy that 
none of that actually affected my future on Artcraft in a negative way. And in fact, thanks to a lot of good, the great thanks thanks to great staff over on ACO, I've uh, even even managed to uh, e even gain ranks over on over here on Artcraft. And I just can't thank them enough for what I've uh, been able to achieve. And I don't really know what else to say, but yeah. So... This has been Dusty Circuit here. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. And remember to rate, comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, stay tuned for my next episodes of the series. And this is bye for now. Well, before I end off this video, I thought I'd take this time to... Just kind of uh, do a little bit of a, I don't know if I really want to say this would be a rant, but just kind of thought I'd express this with my viewers as it is, uh, it, it is kind of heartbreaking to me and might possibly affect my channel in the future. Well, uh... One of, uh, not my closest friends, but one of my friends anyway, uh, Jonah Plays had, uh, uh, well, because of some, something that happened on ACO that I can't go into details about, uh, he had decided to leave Artcraft entirely, even though what he was talking about on ACO had absolutely nothing to do with ACO, and if, if anything, it had to do with Artcraft, the server I'm on right now, and if anything, it was to, had to do with staff, old staff that left. And I'm just going to say that, like, and it's and it just he sees this as uh like a f and blue and then the staff uh want want him to leave Artcraft and never come back again, but he was never forced to leave he actually left uh on 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 his own decisions and um and me personally, like, I, I just can't bring myself to leave AC or ACO to continue being his friend. And I don't want to, like, leave him, but it's just he didn't have to leave. And, like, he, you know, just in my opinion, he could have just sought help and... Rather, th rather than just stir up drama, he could have sought help with the with 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 staff in private. But instead, he chose to bring it up in public and upset players, which is not okay. And well, this is just heartbreaking to me as. Me and Jonah have uh, been uh, collaborating on YouTube since uh, about, I'd have to say, uh, December of uh, 2018, or I think it was the 23rd of December of 2018 was my, had to be my first video I uploaded where I, where, where I was, rec I recorded with, with Jonah Plays, and uh, we do not know if he's actually leaving Artcraft or if he's just taking a break, but he says he's leaving because he's mad. 
or angry, but I mean, if he does come back, I'm going to give him another chance, but if he doesn't come back, well, um, just, I'm more than likely just going to move on with my life, even though I'm still hurt that he, that, 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 that he did, had to do what he had to do, and Really, it's kind of all I had to say, but to Jonah plays, if uh, wherever you are, if, uh, if you see my video, well, I always hope that you're in good hands, and uh, if you, even if you don't return to Artcraft, I hope things, uh, I hope life treats you better. Well, before, well, before I end this off here, I also would like to say that, I mean, none of us are perfect, and, and in fact, even I don't make videos that are happy and cheerful all the time, and I'm just fine. And even I went through a period on, on Artcraft where I had caused, uh, problems, and... But but in fact, uh, I I was never I I, I in I can in my entire history on Artcraft I've probably only been banned three times, and uh, but but most of the time staff actually worked with me and and on on, on solving the problems rather than just re getting rid of me, and. And in fact, a lot of the older staff would have uh, banned me if, uh, they, if, they, if, they, if, they, if they actually would be in charge of the whole server. Anyway, I, I didn't mean, I'm not, I don't mean to go any deeper into this, but I mean, Jonah plays wherever you are. Uh, I hope you're in good hands and even if you don't return to ACO. And uh, anyway, uh, this has been Dusty Circuit here. Remember to rate, comment, like, and subscribe. And stay tuned for the next videos of this series and also, and also all my other videos. And uh, this is Dusty Circuit signing out. Uh, bye.